your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange There were no fighter jets Did someone give the order Not to intercept And if they really scrambled Then why'd they fly so slow Maybe there's an answer That we don't want to know And where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. The Bushes and Bin Ladens Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded They flew his family out Osama got his training From the CIA Our soldiers took Afghanistan They let him slip away A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? Get your views from television news. You'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Howdy. Well, my name's Bill Olson, and welcome to another episode of 9-11 Was an Inside Job. This is Season 3, Episode 2. Um, now, I've got a couple things to cover. We're going to move kind of quick, I hope. We're going to show some clips that'll take up a lot of the show. But first, I wanted to get to what happened last Sunday, January 10th. Uh, Richard Gage, founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, had his second debate with an explosives expert, Ron Craig. It's on the show called The Conspiracy Show, 
with uh, Richard Sirrett. It's a Canadian show. It's it's carried on the internet and over, uh, you know, live broadcast radio waves. Uh, on Z it's called Zoomer Radio from Ontario, Canada. Uh, you can get there by going to www.theconspiracyshow.com. And uh, anyway. They did an interview that took three hours. Now, they did another one back in 2007 that, you know, Richard Gage versus the same guy, Ron Craig. And uh, I listened to part of that, but it was hard to listen to. And But I listened to the entire interview this last Sunday. And what a painful thing to do. Richard Gage is great. I don't see how he has the strength to do it and sit there while the other side is using every evil, wrong, invalid arguing technique you can think of. Uh, I had to use the mute button every time Ron Craig came on. Not every time, but a, but a good number of times. I just, I go, oh, and hit the mute button and wait until, you know, Richard Gage is back. And then I listen to what his response was. It turns out that, uh, you know, I've, I even fired off fired off an email to Richard Gage complimenting him on his effort and thanking him for going through the ordeal for all of us. But, uh, you know, I'm, I told him that I might use excerpts from that interview to show exactly how they use techniques to obfuscate, misdirect, misinterpret, and, you know, every other way to discredit the 9-11 people. Uh, this guy left questions unanswered and ignored key points of evidence just so he could make his points. Uh, it's available right now. You can go to ae911.org and they have a link to it so you can listen to it. But Richard Gage fired off my, a copy of my email to some of his cohorts and they answered me back, you know, saying, you know, don't get so discouraged, Bill. It's good to get this out there. And here's the coverage that that interview had. Uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario to the Carolinas, Maine to Minnesota, New York, Chicago, Washington, and all points between. So that's how much exposure is happening. And I guess from that point of view, that's a good thing. Now, I'm moving on to another subject. Uh, there's a good source for an, uh, analytical news uh, that far surpasses democracy now. Democracy now is more what you'd call mainstream nowadays. I, it's sad to say that. The, Jeremy Scahill is probably the exception, but he's not working for for democracy now anymore. Uh, but the what I'm referring to is the Real News Network, trnn.org. Yeah, I think it's .org. The Real News Network. And I'm going to show some clips, three clips in a row. We'll, we'll break in between, but uh, I'll show three clips this show that are from the Real News Network. The first one I want to show is, uh, well, basically it's talking about how the right-wing nationalists have succeeded in their agenda. Uh, and it's, this is from a black point of view. Usually you hear a black point of view trying to support Obama or, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe attacking somebody who didn't support Obama. And there's an awful lot of white point of views that are the same alignment. So this is a completely refreshing point of view. And I, you know, well, judge for yourself. We're going to play cut two. And here we go. Welcome back to the Real News Network. Joining us again from New Jersey is Glenn Ford. He's the executive editor of BlackAgendaReport.com. Thanks for joining us again, Glenn. Thank you. So let's talk geopolitics coming out of 09, looking into the next decade. What concerns you? What excites you? The generalization of U.S. war. Under President Obama, there seem to be no stops. Nothing between Washington's desire for a general confrontation with real and 